shy and retiring Ann Coulter is, is, a, is an 11-time best-selling author whose latest book is called Adios America, The Left's Plan to Turn Our Country into a Third World Hellhole. That's the title. Sounds like a perfect holiday stocking stuffer to me. Please welcome Ann Coulter. two questions. One is, you know, about Trump threatening to boycott, and the other is about snooking having sex in the car. What, the Which question is, go oh, ahead. definitely snook it. Okay, <laughs> what do you want to say about it? First of all, I'm so glad I'm doing The View, so I found out about this. I was just watching you backstage. You don't get the real news watching the other channels. Um, <laughs> I guess that's one way to get your husband to have sex with you. He was driving, and I sat on him. <laughs> why, why not? And then I tied him up and <laughs> attacked him. That's when I conceived my child. Okay, would you ever try to do that? No, I don't. Okay, all right, let's get to politics. Because Republicans seem to be coming to terms with the fact that, pause, Donald Trump may in fact be the nominee. I've been saying it all along. Have you? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. what happens if he runs against Hillary? He'll be demolished. The It'll woman be knows fantastic. the fantastic, and I think he's exposing um, really both parties and how much control the donors have. He's saying things that people have been dying for someone to say. But they won't because their donors, in the case of immigration, want the cheap labor. We saw it with Scott Walker. Um, Trump comes out against anchor babies. Scott Walker tries to agree with him and saying, oh, I'm against anchor babies too. And then billionaire GOP donor Stanley Hubbard steps in and says, no, 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 we're, we're for anchor babies. And suddenly Scott Walker drops that as his position. Same thing with the 12% tax rate. You can't just, if you disagree with him or go up against him, you, you drop out. You lose the money. Well, no, no, no. It, you, you can't take positions that most Americans, I mean, it's Donald Trump and the American people against the political class yeah. and the donor class. The same thing with his tax plan. And I, I mean, I love him but for the, immigration. But the but class is the Koch brothers, let's say, for example. Mm -hmm. Are they going to put their money behind Trump? Probably not, but who cares? The people are for him. That's what we're finding out right now. Um, look at all of the money Jeb Bush had. And, and by the way, both parties with that 12% rate on hedge fund managers. Hillary Clinton was on the finance committee. I'm sorry, that is unfair. And it takes Donald Trump saying no hedge fund manager should pay the same as Ann Coulter does. It takes him saying that because the donors have been stepping in saying, no, 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 we I like paying less than everyone else. I don't remember. Listen, I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> you already sold okay, that. Do you, think I he can, he, do you think he can you're win? Paying a low, you're paying a higher tax no, rate than hedge fund managers. That's on this because I remember, I remember seeing you at CPAC in 2013 saying that we shouldn't have a businessman, that we should have either a senator or a, a, or a governor, and you said, in fact, it's got to be from a big state, not right. something oh. the size of Rhode Island. Right. So you, at that point, you so were you against a businessman. What changed I, your I, tune? I basically, well, Donald Trump. He's a, the one exception to this rule. I also said um, we shouldn't be running divorcees. I'm altering that for Trump, but no don't divorcees? expect me to hold it to it going forward. You also but said you had reason, a height requirement. You don't have a hair requirement? I have a height requirement. <laughs> I love this hair. Too short. That you you had to go like a, you know so line them up the against the, the little clown in front right. of the roller coaster. And yeah. they said, they can't be divorced. Well, actually, Ronald let me Reagan get back was divorced. To the, the reason I'm generally against the non-governors running is the I call them the novelty candidates, the businessmen. I mean, whether it was Herman Cain, Michelle Bachman, Newt Gingrich, even you see you see it a little bit now with Ben Carson. They're not prepared for the rough and tumble of politics. They say things and sort of box mm. themselves in, and also then they get bored and just say, "I'm going home." Trump has been through all this before. He has been so attacked. I mean, if you were in the in New York area in the 80s, Spy Magazine was going after Trump constantly. There's nothing, no new scandals are coming out that are going to come out against him. And the other thing is that I love about Trump and make an exception for him on a lot of rules, I guess. Well, at least two. Um, Reagan, Romney, Trump. The only people who have run for president whose lives will be made immeasurably worse, both by running and by winning. All right, Anna, you're nothing about Trump. Now let's talk about you. Yeah. <laughs> Adios, America. Of course, I say hola, America, but all right. So you wrote your book, Adios, America, the last plan to turn a con our country into a third world hellhole. Yes. And your stance on immigration is part of why you like Trump. You've said that you are a one-issue voter now.
Tell us, what does this provocative title mean? Explain it to us. Well, I say it, Adios America. <laughs> <laughs> um, I say Adios America. Right. Um, what it means is that, that the nation is, that has been so welcoming to immigrants, to women, to children, is an amazingly successful nation, and the Democrats do it for the votes. The rich do it for the cheap labor and the cheap maids. They strut around like they're Martin Luther King. No, who is our immigration policy hurting? And this is the post-1965 immigration. We're bringing in millions and millions of people from very poor cultures, from very backwards cultures. No, our, t our Social programs are for the American poor. Okay. They are for the American working class. Two immigrants, and I don't think either of us qualify as poor maids. But I wanted to ask you, what's your well, okay, family's immigration story? Are. are you a Native American? Why, yes, I am. I'm a settler. I'm descended from settlers, not from immigrants. Oh, it's not a Native She's American. You were, it's but not I have a question, I have a question for you. It's just an no, if you mean Indian, 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 can I the interrupt you for two the, seconds, please? Yes, the poor I, have, being... I have a question. My mom taught me when I was younger, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. And why do you think that it's important? Why do you think that's important to mudsling and have these these words that obviously touch the hearts and souls of so many people of America being said when we're taught something different as a child? Could you explain that to me? And why do you think your success is based off of that? Well, I'm at least talking about policy. You have a position on what people's names should be. Watermelondria. I mean, you'll insult people for their names. I'm talking about a government policy that affects all Americans and immigrants and the people living here and is harming our country. So are you... So you don't follow it. Are you against... I didn't ask you... Uh, okay. Are you against all immigration or just illegal immigration? No, right now the entire immigration system, the bureaucracy has got to be shut down because it is being used to serve, again, the business elites, mm -hmm. the upper classes, the people who, mm -hmm. who get to have all the cheap maids. It's but driving that's down... Not a lot, again, with the that's, maids. That's, well, it's that's, true, yeah, though. But that's not it is all immigration. Down. This is what you has know, led to... Well, okay, but... No, but my mother came to this country in the 70s because... The there was a shortage of medical professionals who could do the job. That's and very unusual. This year, though. not really. No, there's yes, also, it is. There's so also, many, yes, it is. Wait a minute. Have you been to a hospital lately? There are no, many, no. many doctors no, from look, Pakistan, look, India, look, look, fabulous. But the point is, okay. But whenever, whenever people talk about the immigrants we like, like your mother, they cite the immigrants that aren't the majority of immigrants coming in. So fine. Fine, okay, if, you're, if they're going to be doctors, but, you know what, Anne, but when we so have a majority of, of immigrants are on welfare, why would any country bring Americans in... Americans are on welfare, why would, Americans, No, but yeah. why do you bring no in people? Anymore. They've sent their yeah, jobs we overseas. We can't do anything about... We, we can't do anything about criminal Americans, about poor Americans. We don't need to be importing other countries' poor people. But there's so and many other things to talk about besides being an immigrant basher. Who lives basher, here? Man. Come on. Yes, but they who don't lives here and votes here? They don't this sell is a, This is a very right, good... So then are you for just... Um, rich immigrants coming in but not well, poor no, immigrants what I coming would do, in? Well, right now there have been, we have 42 million foreign born in the country now. It's very high. I think we need a little time to assimilate the ones already here. And then, yeah, set up a system where we get immigrants like your mother and not, look, most of the wealthy right, keep saying right, they want to go. We all would like to say, we have to go, I'm sorry to cut you off. So, I'd just like to say, Muchas gracias for being here. <laughs> and members of our audience are getting uh, her book, Adios America, and we'll be right back. Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. George W. Bush spent the first nine years of his retirement saying almost nothing in public and good for him. It's a dignified and restrained posture that is longstanding tradition among former chief executives. But nobody's staying silent in 2018, so President Bush is now speaking out, and he has a cause, seeking amnesty for millions of illegal immigrants that his administration allowed into this country. The context for his latest remarks was a speech that Bush was giving in the United Arab Emirates. That's an authoritarian Islamic petrostate. Alongside him as he spoke was Michael Milken, the convicted felon and financier. During his remarks, the former president said he wants immediate amnesty for DACA recipients. Quote, America's their home, he said. Congress has got to get it fixed. 
Bush explained that we must give citizenship to illegal immigrants as a reward for providing low-wage labor to companies who don't feel like paying American wages. Quote, there are people willing to do jobs that Americans won't do, the former president said. We ought to say thank you and welcome them. Well, this is the magical world of our elites, people who've never had to worry about how illegal immigrants might affect their kids' schools or the crime rate in their gated neighborhoods or the social cohesion of their communities because they're insulated from all of that. Instead, they repeat diversity is our strength three times like a spell and assume the best will happen. The rest of us, as the former president noted, can shut up and say thank you. So how exactly is this faith-based immigration policy working out so far? Well, let's see. We watch dreamers blockade Disneyland. We watch them harass lawmakers outside their homes to demand an amnesty that they have no legal right to. That's ominous enough. But there are other signs. Here's one. Linda Sarsour. She's a professional activist. She's the child of Palestinian immigrants. You would think that she'd be grateful for the opportunities this country has given her family, especially considering where they came from. But no. Linda Sarsour is not grateful. She hates our country and the people who founded it. During a demonstration yesterday in Washington, Sarsour denounced America and then went on to attack Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer for the color of his skin. Watch this. I'm talking to Chuck Schumer, who's also from Brooklyn. I'm tired of white men negotiating on the backs of people of color and communities like ours. Notice the cheers from the crowd. A lot of people agree with Linda Sarsour, and that should make you nervous. We've invited millions and millions of people into this country in recent years. There are now more immigrants in America right now than at any time in the history of the country. Is America more united than ever before? Is it stronger? Please. It's just the opposite, and everyone knows it. Maybe that's because our elites welcome immigrants by telling them how horrible America is and how bigoted its native population. Our immigrants believe that. Why wouldn't they? It's not their fault. It's ours. We're creating a lot of Linda Sarsours. This is a recipe for civil war. Diverse countries need a reason to stick together. They don't do it organically. Our elites ought to be staying up late, night after night, every night, trying to figure out what that reason is. Why should we hang together? A shared language, a shared culture, a shared set of core beliefs? Pick one. Our ruling class rejects all of those. Just shut up and say thank you. That's their answer. It won't end well.